Hi, I'm Canary3D, and this video will show you how to do a custom eyeball morph for Genesis 9. So first I'm going to make a custom morph for the Genesis 9 base figure. This is the dev load figure, so I've exported it without its eyeballs. The eyeballs are a separate figure now with Genesis 9, which is different from previous versions. So I'm in Cinema 4D. You can use whatever modeling app you like, though, to make custom morphs, obviously. I'm just going to make a demonstration morph, so I'm using the sculpt tools. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the drag uh, in the sculpt tool. And I'm going to just drag the eye around in a strange way and make a weird big eye. So now I have this weird big eye, right? And uh, it's not the best looking. Morph, even though this is just for demonstration, I may as well clean it up a little bit so that if I feel like using it later, I can. So uh, I'm going to take the smooth tool here and size it down a little bit. And I'm, I'm doing everything just on one side of the head because Daz will fix the symmetry for me. So uh, there, now that's smoothed. So it's still creepy looking, but it should work. So there's my morph. The final step is to save it to an OBJ file and then head over to Daz Studio. Over in Daz Studio, I select the Genesis 9 figure and fire up Morph Loader Pro. And you have some options under uh, how you're going to load it. Now, right now I'm just loading it into Morph Loader into that folder. Um, I'm not subdividing, I'm not doing anything too fancy, and because I'm not replacing anything, I don't have to change this. I'm going to tell it to morph mirror right to left so that now I made the morph on one side but it should come in on both sides now. So now let's uh, let's see what we have in our parameters here for our morphs. Crazy eye. <laughs> so obviously that nose is going to need to be fixed before we do something you know serious with it. Um, okay so now we want these eyeballs to fit but they don't fit right. Uh, that's not great. Now, if I want to change the size of the eyes on a normal day, um, I could use a morph here to do that, right? And I, the morph is in the main figure in Genesis 9. But let's look at what happens if I turn off the crazy eye morph. We're going to go back to normal. And then if I go to the Genesis 9 morphs that are part of the eyes, not pose controls because those are interacting with the rigging system um, whereas if you go to actor you will find the morphs and sometimes ERC dials so under the head under the face that's where you find eyes and so you have these asymmetries and if you are a DAS PA you have the option to buy a license to be able to use um, their morph kit as part of making your own morphs. So you would think you could use this to resize the eyes, but it resizes the eye socket in the head as well. So you can't really use it directly on the Genesis 9 figure to make a corrective for the uh, crazy eye figure and all, or the crazy eye. You can't really use it on Genesis 9 to make a corrective because it changes the, the eye and the eye socket at the same time. I let my crazy eye morph and I go back to the eye hole size morph. It doesn't help. It makes the eye around the socket bigger as well as making the eye itself bigger. So this isn't helping me right now, but if I close up the Genesis 9 figure and I choose the Genesis 9 eyes figure, then I can browse to the morphs and from there, I'll be able to use that eye hole size. Now you notice there's not very many morphs here. The only reason eye hole size is sitting here is because I dialed it in the Genesis 9 figure, so it created an auto-generated one in the eyeball. So any morphs that you want to use, you need to dial them up here first, and then um, you know eye hole angle. If I dial this up, it should be auto-generating right now into the eyeball and so now if I go to the eye figure now eye hole angle is an option as well even though it doesn't actually have an effect on the eyeball itself um, so eye hole size does have an effect so we can dial eye hole size up um, and that's a pretty good fix if you are a DAS PA you are allowed to use this if you have purchased the license to use this 
So let's say you're not a DAS PA or you didn't purchase the license, which is fine. You just have to do a little more work to get it to fit. So we're going to, now when I try to scale up the whole figure, you can see that's a mistake. So we want to go to the actual um, body part that is the eye. So we need to select that. It's selecting it in the Genesis 9 figure instead of in the eyeball figure, which is a real hassle. What I find helps is to select, uh, no, that doesn't help at all, does it? Um, what I find helps is to go to the bone tool and then directly select that bone. And then it'll get you to where you want to be. Don't modify the bone or you're going to be sorry. But if you select it, now you're on the right, it's, you know, expanded to the right location. So now I've got the right eye selected. So let's see what happens when we do our scaling there. So there I can do my scaling. It's a little low in the socket, so I want to move it up. So I'm going to Y translate, but you see how it's like, it's looking down when I do that. Um, so it, it basically you can just mess with these dials and don't worry about logic or how it's supposed to work with the rigging or any of that stuff. Just get it so that it appears to be doing what you want in the eye socket is your first step. And uh, these translation values can be a little persnickety. I like to modify them by just literally typing in values until it does what I want. Um, so um, this here and always make sure to check it from the side as well as from the front. Um, so this looks okay. Uh, she's looking up a little too much and it's not quite big enough. So I'm going to scale up to 118 here. See how that looks? That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Now you see I've only done one eye. That's okay. Now we're going to export this eye and we're going to do it as a morph. Now in order to export it as a morph you have to turn your resolution down to base resolution and you have to make everything else in the scene invisible and then export the figure. To do all those clicks I use this OBJ Companion by Man Friday. Um, if you don't have it just make sure you change your resolution and you make everything else invisible. Uh, I'm just going to select the eyes. I'm actually going to also export Genesis 9 while I'm at it so I can fix this nose on this uh, particular morph and make it a little more usable. Um, so I'm going to export and it's going to let me export both at once. Again this is a feature of the OBJ Companion plugin. Definitely worth it if you are uh, a content creator. I'm not going back to my modeler except to fix this nose which I won't include in the video. I'll just fix it and bring it back. All right I fixed that. Let's see if I did it correctly. I'm going to overwrite. So having fixed my morph, I have to go here. I always do deltas and ERC links. It might be fine to just do deltas. I'm not sure. I'm not morph mirroring this time because I've already got a mirrored morph. I accept that and now the, the nose is fixed. So um, now with the eyeball, I don't have to bring this eyeball into anything to create a morph with it. I just have to go and make sure I know the name of the morph. And so to do that, uh, go to your object, go to your currently used parameters while you have the morph dialed. And see here it's called Genesis 9 Crazy Eye. So what I do with parameter settings, you need the name of the thing, not the label. So now if I was going to market this, I wouldn't actually call it Genesis 9 Crazy Eye. I would call this um, you know, CY3D uh, demo, and then this is a blend shape. Oh, it's in the head. It's in the head region. It's a blend shape, and then I just give it my name, Crazy Eye, with no spaces because spaces are a nightmare if you're trying to edit. Now I'm gonna copy and paste this name. I'm gonna see if the um, if the eye changed as well, or if I've you know, got an orphan morph out there. I think I have an orphan morph out there. So let's see what happens when I turn it off again. So over here, when I go to the eyes and currently used, let's go see what this is called now. It's still got that. So I'm gonna give it this name now and uh, call it um, CY 
3D demo crazy eye. Alright, and so now let's see what happens if I go back here and turn this off. It's now turned off in the eye as well because now they're named the same. So now I'm going to dial it back on again. All right, and then we're going to go see if it's dialed in on the eye. And it is. Now the eye also has all this translation and stuff on it, so we're going to want to zero the position. Um, we're going to zero the pose. We're not going to zero the shape because that's the dialed in morph. We're not going to zero figure because that turns off every hidden corrective and all kinds of stuff, so it's better not to use that on as complex a figure as Genesis 9. So now the eyes are back where they started. So, so now I'm just going to go to Morph Loader Pro and go find the eyes that I exported earlier after I made those adjustments. Here I only did one eye, so we're going to use Morph Mirroring again right to left. And the name... Um, to get it to overwrite, we need to use that copy-pasted internal name like this, and then we need to tell it to overwrite. And we need to make sure we're on the I figure, not on the Genesis 9 base figure. So then if I accept, now it has dialed my, um, my new morph in. And if I go back to Genesis, I can then dial this morph up and down and the eyes will go along with it. So that is um, how to create an eye morph. Now, the last step is to save your morph. Otherwise, you're just gonna be very sad. So I'm on the Genesis 9 base figure. I'm gonna save as a morph asset. Um, Canary 3D demos is gonna be my project. And I'm just saving this one property. So uh, that's under Morph's Morph Loader, right? So I'm saving this into the product. Then I have to go and do a, the same save on the eyes. Now the, the mouth, the eye, uh, you know, the tear and the, um, the eyelashes, they all seem to auto follow just fine. So I'm not making custom morphs for those. So I don't have to save the morph for those. But wherever you make a custom morph, you have to go through this step to save the morph. Um, otherwise, uh, you know, sadness will result. So now, um, and you know, this is not for a product, but I just have a product name because that determines what folder it goes into in your data folder. Um, so we're going to go, nope, actually, I need to, <laughs> I'm looking in the wrong place. Go to Morph Loader, and we're going to save just this and accept that. And then to test it, we're going to remove everything from the scene and go uh, load up um, Genesis 9 again. And if we've done our saves correctly, the Crazy Eye Morph should be there, which it is, and it should carry the eyes along with it. So that is how to do a custom eye morph for Genesis 9.